everybody, it's Tyler here at the World Championship, checking in team number 3015, Ranger Robotics. An absolutely incredible season for Ranger this year. Three wins, three blue banners as they come through. I have been a huge fan of Ranger Robotics this year. They're incredible autonomous. Take a look at this massive arm as it goes all the way through. We'll be talking about some of their driver station area. They got an awesome climb. You got to check out Ranger Robotics and what they bring here coming up on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your educational robotics needs. From mechanical, electrical, tools, and hardware, Animark has over 200 years of first-team experience and offers high-quality and affordable solutions for the robotics mobility and competition markets. Head on over to Animark.com to get started. Liz, let's start out on your own. This showpiece here of this incredible arm that you have. I love to just hear what's gone all into it. You got turrets, you got uh, telescoping coming out, you got an awesome jaw. Talk to me about what's gone into this. Yeah, okay. so I'll start with um, the telescoping arm. So we're driven by a lead screw, which um, is not very common. We generally get a lot of cascading arms in this part. Um, the second stage up here is cascading through this ratchet strap right here. Um, and this is really like the basis of our mechanism. And we machine this all in-house. Then down to our turret, we're um, a pulley system. So this is our belt and these are our motors. Um, it's like this so that when we, ca we can um, move our arm down and still be able to pass over everything instead of just having the straight up gearbox and Falcon um, configuration. Um, and uh, our pulley, there's two bushings on the bottom and just a two inch shaft that really um, just pulls it all together. And it's just uh, clean, consistent, and we added this so that we could um, like have some fine adjustment inside of our um, scoring. Let me ask you in here, when you're looking, uh, you guys are running sword drive on your robot and the turret and the telescope and stuff like that. When you were looking at the game, what made you decide like, hey, we need to do all this in order to accomplish our goals? Because obviously it's been working quite well. Yeah, so we didn't um, establish all of this at the beginning of the game. So we talked through it. And one of our first big tests was, we call it um, our two by four test. So we put a two by four on our swerve drivetrain. And when we moved the, like, the slightest amount that we possibly could control our drivetrain, it went from one of the pole straight to the other end of the pole. So we, really, we knew we couldn't get that like, fine adjustment that we wanted. So we needed a way to adjust based on um, like minute differences. So like sure. differences in fields, um, stuff like that. And it really helps like our auto scoring work. So our scoring is fully automated. Um, driver just goes up and locks his wheels and it just points to where it needs to go and drops it. So talk to me a little bit as we continue on here, uh, this jaw that you have here. Uh, when you're approaching the game, you know, I've seen many different widths of intakes uh, for teams. So uh, why was this one the best one for Ranger Robotics when you were approaching the game? So one of our biggest problems was we couldn't figure out how to pick up a cone when it was tipped over. So we knew that the game initially was going to be won by the middle of the fields, um, quick cycles, easy cycles. So our jaw can adjust to pick up cones from oh, the cool. floor or from the shelf. So we're not just limited to one orientation of cone and we can get the cubes in here. Um, so one thing that really makes the wide intake possible with our automated scoring is this camera. It takes a snapshot of the game piece and it just sends it to the Rio and the Rio figures out the rest, like what the offset needs to be and um, like how what the offset needs to be and how um, to get there from the driver's drivetrain. And I know we'll be talking a little bit more about your driver's station and code and all that stuff a little bit later on with Julia as well too. So yes. um, anything else on your arm that you wanted to cover in particular? Um, not particularly. All right, well, let's talk about your buddy climb that you have on here as well too. Yeah. This might be the, the, the shortest one I've definitely seen of all robots. A lot of them are seeing long forks, that sort of thing. So talk to me more about that. And if we can see a little demo of it happening too, it'd be great. Yeah. So we don't like to call it a buddy climb because we don't need a buddy, which okay. is part of the different parts. I love it. Yeah, yeah that's uh, one of the different side climbs that we've seen. So we lift back, Julia, if you want to. So our arms go back and they spring forward so that um, we can push onto the charge station and lift ourselves up and climb over the side. So uh, I'll take it the same thing with the arm. When you were approaching this, like you said, it's not a buddy climb sort of thing. It's definitely very unique. Then what made you come up with this concept or how did you come up with this concept? So um, one of the big factors in quals was going to be a triple climb, getting that rank point, and that's how you really like climb the rankings. Um, and this 
really helped our last competition because it meant that we could wait until the last possible second to go climb um, so that our, our partners could just get balanced and we would just squeeze a quick cycle in there and just pop up the side. And then looking at your uh, your underbelly, your robot, and kind of uh, going on on the bottom, I noticed a few things you wanted to cover on that, so talk to me more about it. So um, I guess our the unique, unique thing about our robot is our hashtag drive frame. Um, so there, the, what really like makes a turret possible is we've got uh, the swerves on the outside, and we've got half lap joints that are our drive rail, so they fit together. Um, yeah. So they fit together, um, just like they friction fit. Um, We've got plates that like hold them together a little bit, um, and that really allows us to like mount basically wherever we want on this. It's just um, eighth inch aluminum plating over the top, um, so we can mount all our electronics. We can have space for the turret in the center, um, and it's just a really unique drivetrain that I actually haven't seen before. I mean, an absolutely phenomenal machine. I love hearing about all the mechanical aspects you've gone through. Let's talk a little bit more about code and programming as well, too. Pass over to Julia. Talk more about, uh, obviously, see a couple of limelights. Uh, more, you know, a lot of teams using limelights, but I think your team has been approaching auto so well. Mm -hmm. So I'd love to hear more about that. And I know we have some things on your driver's station to show, too. Yeah, so on our robot, we have five limelights. During Autonomous, we set up backwards now. So we have a limelight on our backside to track um, the April tags. Uh, so our robot always knows like where we are and it can line up. Uh, our line lights utilize the April tags to uh, adjust our turret, our arm angle, and our arm extension. And our front line light over here is always tracking a game piece. So uh, depending on if we're on cone or cube mode, our robot can see a game piece and then auto aligns to it when we want to intake from the floor. Uh, the remaining, so the three limelights on our drive base, so the right, center, and left, we don't use the back one during teleop. The three are constantly seeing April tags and lining up everything during scoring. Um, we just, we so our everything else is automated, and then we recently made it automated, so when our turret angle is within a degree, it will automatically outtake the cone. This, we found that this decreased cycle time and really helped our driver. Um, if we have to score a game piece on the other side, like he doesn't have to manually line things up anymore. It automatically just goes for it. And how does that kind of integrate that into your driver station? So like, do, are your drivers yeah. seeing something on screen or how does that work exactly? So our driver station is just this. We don't put any camera or any vision from the limelights on here. This is mainly our co-driver controls. So. This is like a, a setup of the grid um, field layout. Uh, so our co-driver will press once, and this means that the robot is prepared to score a cone on the mid rung. And once once the robot scores there, our co-driver can just press it again, meaning that a game piece is scored there. And so this can work for um, up here as well. And if we want to uh, score a cube, it will automatically put us in cube mode, which adjusts our jaw and everything else. Is that like the primary role of your co-driver then? It's mostly just on screen or do, yes. they, do they do stuff like on controls as a backup or how does that work? He does have backup controls. Um, there are manuals in case a limelight goes out or something funky goes wrong. Our co-driver does have the ability to manually line things up in case something happens. I mean, this is awesome stuff. I love seeing how teams are, are just innovating throughout the entire year. And as mentioned, Rager Robotics is, has been having such a phenomenal season. So wish you best of luck here at World Championships. Thank you so much for telling us more about your team, your robot. And we can't wait to see how you all perform. Good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your educational robotics needs. From mechanical, electrical, tools, and hardware, Animark has over 200 years of first-team experience and offers high-quality and affordable solutions for the robotics mobility and competition markets. Head on over to Animark.com to get started. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. 
Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.